Um, that might get me. I'm going to take off my shoes. Is that all right? Sure. I'm just going to start undressing and you tell me when to stop, <laughs> when it's enough. When it's uncomfortable. <laughs> well, you are an experienced man and individual. I'm sure you've been in plenty of uncomfortable situations. Oh. One or two. <laughs> yes, yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> oh man, are we going to elaborate on that? Uh, it was the uh, Arizona Bike Week. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. You're, you're mentioning that, yeah. um, guys. Welcome to this one time today. My guest is a Cecil Walker. Um, I know you through uh, the Breathing Life International and New Breed Men uh, Men's Group, and you run a um, Instagram page, website, um, photography and videography for Live a Great Story. Um, I appreciate you setting some time aside. Thank Busy you. schedule, man. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, no, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for doing it. So yesterday you were at International Bike Week, and right after this you're saying you're going to actually head up north to go buy yourself a new bike. Yes. Yep. Uh, right after this we're heading up to Mesquite, Nevada. Uh-huh. Uh, six hour drive that takes me through Las Vegas and, uh, picking up a new gold wing. Hey, nice. Through Las Vegas. Now, are you going to make a pit stop to maybe Probably not. <laughs> bet it all on black? No, no I'm not that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were you doing at uh, bike week? Uh, we have a booth. Um, I'm part of the Christian motorcyclists association mm -hmm. and I'm the president of the Mesa chapter called desert disciples. Uh -huh. So we have a booth, we hand out water. Um, rag tracks so that they can wipe their bikes down, things nice. like that. But uh, every year we're asked to do a message on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And that message uh, goes out to, uh, it's a pretty good sized tent that's set up. Um, it's called the kickstand bar. Oh, so nice. on Sunday we take it over nice. and uh, we, we gave a Sunday message. Yeah. Just to invigorate the community a bit. A little bit, a little bit. And, yeah. and the cool part was the opening band for us was Alice Cooper School of Rock. That's right. Some yeah. of the some of their uh, esteemed players and uh, soon-to-be graduates. Soon-to-be graduates. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. And any music you recognize or is it all these new, new kids playing uh, songs you don't recognize? No, you know, I was really impressed because they learned our songs. Yeah, right. Right? So, yeah. you know... I know they didn't have a huge amount of time to practice, mm. but they were really tight. It, yeah. was, it was amazing. A testament to the school. Yeah, I guess. And <laughs> the students' talent. <laughs> Where did your uh, love for bikes originate? Oh, wow. Uh, 1993. Okay. Yeah. I, I had a friend that I moved back from California. I was in California for three years for work. Moved back here, and we formed a brand new team. Mm -hmm. And I got to know this guy, and we became best friends. And he had a Suzuki GS550. Yeah. And he said, take it down the road. I had no idea. You know, it's like, okay, what do these do? You yeah. Know, so. And I'm not too familiar with bikes. Uh, and by not too familiar, I say I know nothing. And so I, I would assume <laughs> a Suzuki is more like a sports or... Um, a, a speed bike or what would you yeah, call that? Yeah, bike? No, it's a good description. Crotch rocket. Right. It's a standard mm -hmm. that is a little more sporty. So not quite a full sport bike, but, uh -huh. um, it was, it was pretty neat and I was hooked yeah, just going right? down the road and back successfully, <laughs> not hitting anything. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what got it started. And then I, I jumped into the deep end mm -hmm. and, uh, got a 93 Honda CBR 600, F2. That is a sport bike. Uh, okay. Lots of plastic. Um, not a great beginner bike, but uh, I immediately went and got that, trained. So as a beginner bike, you would want something that maybe is a little bit more stable, not as hot, not a whole lot of torque. Like what are we, what are the, we referring the, to? Yeah, the ideal one would be one that if you fell, it isn't going to total the bike because of all the plastic damage. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So uh, a naked bike mm -hmm. where you see the whole engine, mm. there's very little things to damage. Gotcha. This one was not that. <laughs> so right away I, I jumped into a Team Arizona motorcycle safety class. Gotcha. And it taught me the basics. It taught me all the right 
um, skills because your natural reactions are wrong. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, so, you got to stay calm, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's times you want to break and there's times breaking is a bad idea. Oh, sure. So, shoot. you know, you, without knowing, you yeah. do the wrong thing. Yeah. So that first class kind of nailed down some of these oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. things that are, are common for people. Right. To hate. Right. And I highly recommend it to anybody that's starting out because... You don't have to know anything. Mm -hmm. They start with the very basics and it's usually better that way. There's no bad habits to break. So, right. You almost have to, you know, if you've been writing for X amount of years and you're like, I'm going to finally take one of these classes and then you're like, oh, I have to unlearn a lot of these habits. Exactly. You know, and to jump forward in time, I liked it so much. I took their intermediate class Mm -hmm. and then I took their advanced writer class and then I became an instructor for them. (laughs) Man. Yeah. I, I instructed for a, a few years and, and I had that situation where I'm teaching an advanced writer class yeah. and this guy has been writing for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Well, what are you going to teach me? Yeah. Cause then I'd introduce myself and say, Hey, I've only been writing three years or something. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I would always make him a bet that if you don't learn something you think is going to make you a safer writer. I'll pay for your class. I'll pay for the class. And nobody did. Yeah. So, yeah. Huh? I mean, it's, it's that good of a class. Oh, good. That's good to know. And that, that there is an avenue for people out there. Cause yeah, if, me, like I would say, you know, if I wanted to pick up a bike, like where, where do I even start at this mm-hmm. point? You know? So it's good to, to know that there are, you know, some programs that will lead you from not just beginner, but right. to, you know, the advanced and, and that you really ran with it and you became an instructor. It's kind of a part of my nature, I think. I, yeah. Whenever I get interested in something, it's like right to the deep end. Yeah. It's all in. And, and you're, you're providing um, people with like one of the ultimate forms of like freedom, right, is, is the motorcycle. It's yeah. f- you get that the wind's Wind. right on oh, yeah. you. Um, it's freedom. What was, is that basically kind of like w- the main thing that kind of hooked you at first? You're like, wow, this is so freeing and exhilarating. Yeah. 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 And, and so now you've been riding for what is 30 years? Yeah. What, um, cause they say that there's two types of riders, right? The people that have been in an accident. Right. <laughs> and the people that will be will in an be, accident. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, what, um, what feelings do you get when you ride now that just are like, this is why I do it? Um, still a little bit of that, that solitude, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you can get rid of a lot of stuff in your mind and just be focused Mm -hmm. and, and enjoy the scenery. Um, but focused on the ride and yeah, you're more in tune. uh, Yes. Yeah. Good description. Yeah, so you have to be extra present. Like you can't. Yeah, don't daydream. And you can't be here and like your phone down <laughs> no, here no, no, and no. you know doing yeah. your makeup. Your right. eyebrows look great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. spent a lot of time on. <laughs> um. When, so when's the last time you instructed anybody? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. But I I stay in touch with the the school and the team, and yeah, they had a booth set up at Arizona Bike Week. Oh, and nice. I went by and. One of the guys that was there, I knew, I've known for a long, long time. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any, any, you know, uh, close calls that you've had that? One. Yes. One in 30 years. Whoa. Yeah. Heck yeah. And you know, I've, I've had some close calls because if you ride on the streets here, yeah. people don't look for you mm-hmm. and they'll come over into your lane and you're there. Yeah. So you're always riding defensively yes. and knowing they don't see you and they're going to yeah. do dumb things right in front of you yes, or into you. But the one that I actually was down on okay. a bike, I was taking a high speed, um, training class. Mm-hmm. It was, it w- which one was it? It was the Keith code super bike class. Okay. And, uh, at that time I was riding Honda VFRs and it's a V4 motor, um, awesome bike kind of part sporting, sporting bike and part touring okay. you know, where you can go distance. Touring, yeah, longer periods yeah. of time. Yeah, yeah. More comfortable. Right, more comfortable. Instead of just a really tight, I'm racing. Mm. You know, this one is a lot more ergonomic. Um, so I'm at Firebird Raceway doing this class and uh, friend, one of the friends of mine that was on the same bike that I was on 
was telling me during one of the breaks that, yeah, see that guy over there? He's an ex racer. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's a pro. Yeah. Uh, kind of retired. And he's riding this bike that, you know, on the straightaway, I blew right past him. Dang. And I knew my friends on the same bike I am. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm riding the circuit and we come around the tower turn and drop onto the drag strip, the straightaway. Yeah. And I see him in front of me. Yeah. It's like, hmm, I wonder if I can pass him. <laughs> and I did pretty easily because of the horsepower difference. He yeah. was on a smaller bike. Gotcha. Then I, we get to the end and it's a left uh, banking turn into a carousel. And I break pretty easy, uh, pretty early because... I'm not a racer. Mm. You know, I'm trying to get my speed down yeah. um, from 140. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so uh, we come into that turn, and, and I'm in the turn, looking through it like you're supposed to. There's the apron on my left. Yep. And then I see something on my right. Just out of the corner of my eye, another motorcycle. Yeah. It's him. He's taking it. He is way... Uh, faster in corners than I am mm -hmm. and a, the lighter bike he just carried speed and uh, he's passing on the outside perfectly legal and I got distracted yeah all I did was look over oh and I took my eyes off the line I came up onto the apron and down my lines bl totally blown yeah and uh, the next thing I I see is you know I'm, I'm trying I'm dragging metal parts mm. trying to get through this turn uh -huh. and then I see brown that means <laughs> I'm running out of asphalt <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna make this turn so I stand it up and ride off into the the dirt runoff yeah and in the distance there's a nice concrete wall oh man and it's like okay let's try and get this stopped mm -hmm. and I'm mainly using my rear brake because gotcha. I don't want the front to wash out and the next thing I know is the back ends coming around it's like how's that getting oh, whoa and it was a really gentle low side uh -huh. slid hopped up nothing you know other than yeah. crushed ego yeah <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of the pride yeah so an instructor sees this and he almost takes out people to get over to me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, he's are you all right i'm like yeah yeah he goes I, by this time, I picked the bike up, mm -hmm. just adrenaline, you yeah. know, because it's not a light bike. Yeah. And so um, I'm standing there, and he goes, will it start? Let's see. It started right up. All it's, right. It's This red bike is brown. I'm brown. Yeah. You yeah, know, because yeah. of the dust and dirt. So uh, he goes, follow me back to the pits. Okay. So we get over there, and he's like, so what happened? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't remember. <laughs> it was gone. Oh, shit. So in the middle of it, everything was slow motion. Yeah. It's everything yes. is, oh, this is not good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then when we got back over, that piece of memory was gone. Yeah, it was just a blur. Just... Yeah. So he goes, oh, you don't remember coming into the turn? I said, mm, yeah, well, I know I was in the turn. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you don't remember the other bike. I go, other bike, other bike. Ooh, yeah, other bike. And it's starting to come back. And he goes, yeah, you don't remember that other bike that cut you off and sucked you into the corner faster than you wanted to go? Uh, well, that doesn't sound right. And then it started filling back in. I said, no, 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 no. He was totally outside my turn. Yeah. Passing me on the outside, perfectly legal. And when he came back over, nowhere near me. So mm. it was, they were blaming him as the X racer. Uh, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I knowing patched some of those it together. Yeah. 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 I patched it together enough to know, no, it was me. Mm. I blew it with mm. my, uh, taking my eyes off. Normally what, what, what they were saying that he came in like a little too tight on you. And does that create, is that more of like a, whoa, I got to watch out. Or that, does that also create like, um, the drafting? Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, it could be a, a lot of factors that mess up the next rider, especially uh -huh. if they're not a racer. Yes. Right? Not used to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was all my fault. 
Man, what were you equipped with? Like, were you in like in full garb to be able yeah. to take? Yeah, you, for those classes, you have to be. Gotcha. Um, I wasn't wearing full leathers, uh-huh. but um, the kind of composite stuff that I was wearing yeah. had elbow uh, cups and padding, and mm-hmm. you know, everywhere, all the impact zones and stuff. So yeah. um, it worked out fine. Heck yeah! And how long ago was this? Probably 1997. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, at this point you're you're under five years in. Yeah. And uh, and and a lot younger too. I was a little that, younger. <laughs> with that, some of the uh, yeah, yeah. the the uh, the fallout of taking right. a tumble. I, you were taking this turn at 140. No, slow, no. Well, you slowing down. Yeah, right? yeah, you were yeah. at 140 yeah. slowing down. I'm gonna say you're going in. Listen, <laughs> I I can't. I don't know how to describe that. I've never experienced anything like that. It's but pretty cool. Yeah, I can tell that's you know a rush. Obviously, yeah, definitely man. a rush, man. But um, other than people kind of coming into your lane on on you know the highways or right. the freeways here, no, uh, no, you've, you've managed no. to avoid it. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. see that's that testament to maybe the classes that you Absolutely. instructed you know well yeah that's what started me on that journey do you think you learned more from taking all three classes or the time where you were instructing what do you think you learned a little more? both um the first three were fundamental yeah you know and they build on each other mm-hmm. um so yeah definitely those instructing takes it to another level it does right because you have to demonstrate demonstrate what you want them to do yeah. perfectly, and each person receives the information differently they too, do. right? So you they have do. to find out how this person, right. how you have to describe it to them, yeah. right? Yeah, you do corrective. Mm-hmm. You know, each person's different, like you said. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 super interesting. So why is it? Why are bike guys? Um, and you're going to speak for everybody because you're their ambassador, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, why do some, um, like even, and I say because you said it, right? You're like, oh, yeah, I'm switching from Harley to Honda. Why is that a big thing where, like, somebody's like, now I'm, like, you know, like, switching? And I think it's, it's people are like that with cars in general, right? Mm-hmm. It's like Ford versus Chevy right. and Dodge. But I think it's an, at another level with, with motorcycles, um, and I guess I want to say is because you do have to be extra present. You have to be really intimate with mm-hmm. this vehicle because you're exposed, right? Right. Um, but what do you what do you think you can attest to the the, mm. the slight tribalism? Oh, there's nothing slight about it. <laughs> <laughs> when I went from Honda to the the Harley, yeah, it's you're joining a whole different family. Mm, you know, gotcha. it, it's a culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I was going from a I think my latest bike was a 2006 Honda VFR. Mm-hmm. And I, I went to a 2014 Harley Breakout. So this is kind of, I was describing the naked bike that doesn't yeah. have a lot of plastic. Yes. No plastic whatsoever on this thing. No fairing, no windshield. Oh, um, wow. But it was comfortable as a sport bike rider because I, it, it was, it, everything felt better. Like the, handlebars were flat and you reached out to them. Uh Um, and so it was a nice transition, but you're also taking a giant step backwards in technology. Gotcha. The Honda, Suzuki's, Kawasaki's, all, all of those kind of bikes, um, like state of the art. Yeah. It's loaded. What they were racing on the racetracks, they're selling in the dealerships. Oh wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they advanced the technology so fast. Mm Mm-hmm. Then you hop on a Harley and it's older technology for reason, because part of it is the allure, the, yeah. the sound mm-hmm. is patented. You know, that, that Harley sound is, is patented. So, um, it, it was, it was a whole different vibe. And, and, you know, it's funny because now I've got a 2012 CVO road glide. So it's a custom vehicle operation, kind of a rare bike. Okay. And uh, I'm switching to this Honda Goldwing, which, you know, <laughs> totally yes. different. Uh, and part of the reason in doing that is I, I want to ride some really long distance rides. Okay. And way more comfortable. But I'm kind of checking my ego again because when I ride the Harley, it's, it's, it's bad. You know, and I feel like I'm bad. You know? Oh, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
this will this will fit my personality a little gotcha bit okay okay <laughs> yes because when you say yeah i ride bikes and it's like i gotta have harley then yeah. that yeah. people in people's minds that paints a certain picture right right i get it yeah i get that for sure um well man if i had time i would definitely ride up there with you and then you know you'd abandon your truck up there and we'd have a very intimate ride on the way back <laughs> <laughs> no, okay no no <laughs> Um, Cecil, so, um, I came to know you through the, through the men's group right. and, um, we had talked a little bit about live a great story Yeah, yeah. and, um, just had this conversation yesterday with one of my, um, coworkers at uh, game show bathrooms of all places. Um, and we were kind of talking about, you know, my podcast and, and how, how this kind of plays out. And, you know, some people have mentioned like, are you, you know, do you do research? Do you do, you know, you should come with these questions and I get it. I do. I do. But I like the allure of I'm getting to know my, you know, guest right. as the audience does. And right, it right. plays out like a natural conversation. Sure. Um, so what is live a great story? Yeah, no, I'd love to talk about it. Um, you know, I came across this on Facebook mm -hmm. and for the longest time, that was kind of my mental motto. Um, I, I like to encourage people mm -hmm. to uh, try new things, yeah. meet new people, yes. um, just expand it, right? And then I, I found that through that, I was hearing some great stories, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm able to share some great stories, I think. Um, and then I came across this in a it was done, put together by a guy named um, Zach, and uh, he he goes by Z whenever he's informally gotcha. uh, talking. But he started this, and it just resonated. I loved it. It's like oh, I go camping um, with my Subaru Crosstrek, yeah, and back in there. And these people I'm camping with are kind of hardcore. You gotcha. know, they they've modified their vehicles and and stuff like that. Yeah. And everywhere I ended up going, whether there or scuba diving or, or whatever, I'm running into people who have these great stories. So yeah. I started buying some things like this flag here that goes on the back of my car. Mm -hmm. um, it's, conver it's a conversation starter, yeah. really is what it is. Yes. Right. So um, Zach started this and it's just exploded. And at a point in time, he put an invitation out. Hey, submit an application mm -hmm. if you would like to be considered as an ambassador mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. the, the message here. And yeah. I did and got accepted. So, uh, you know, I, I usually carry stickers around with me. Yeah. And when I hear a great story, just impromptu, you know, it's like, man, that is really a great story. Yeah. Let me give you something. So, These are the small ones. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. And so what you do is get people to tell great stories. Oh, thanks, so those man. are for you. Oh, I love it. I'll have to share this. You got to pass it along. I know I, I did get one from you um, the first yeah. time we met. Yeah. yeah. These are probably a little smaller. Yes. And, and easier to put on a tablet, phone, whatever. Yes. Oh, and on the back it says, be the hero of your story. That's true, man. Um, there's, there's, there is a hero and a villain in each one of our stories. And a lot of times we are both. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I like to tell people that on earth here, we get to be an example. Mm -hmm. You're going to be an example. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you, you're going to choose to be a good example or a yeah. bad example. Yeah. Cause like you said, there's those two wolves inside of us and the one that grows is one you feed. That is true. That is true. And, and acknowledging that there are those two and that there's two sides of, of each one, two main sides and a lot of intricacies. So we are not just black and white. Absolutely. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's layers. There's layers. beauty in the gray. It, there <laughs> is so much beauty in the gay, the, whoa, the gray <laughs> and the nuances yeah. of, of people. And, you know, I don't like, I don't like that. If you tell me one thing about you, um, you know, if someone shares something in ideology, then, um, I can assume the rest of, you know, where you fall. No, mm -hmm. I want, I want to yeah. be, you know, take, 
taken aback by like right, right. your ideas and philosophies yeah. and like, well, hold on. How are you bridging these two, which I initially would have thought are not connected. Right. And, and I think the ind- individuals and their perspectives and the stories that they lived, you know, play into all of that. Yeah. You're right there. <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's the, um, I guess I would imagine that this takes you, this allows you to travel the world in a sense. Or is that something you do on your own? I do on my own, right? Yeah. And what has taken me all over the world, first was my job. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I retired last August. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, I was going to retire next month, May. Yeah. And uh, they made it very lucrative to go away then. So it was like, (laughs) well, yes, I will. (laughs) You know what? I was thinking, yes. Yes. Yes, I will. Yeah. So... um, it switched to scuba diving and really that story parallels the, the motorcycle. Okay. I started diving. I got open water certified, went into the next levels, you know, advanced diver Mm -hmm. and, um, eventually rescue diver. Wow. And it's not rescue to go find people. It's what, you know, you're diving and you have an issue. How Mm -hmm. do I help you out of that? Gotcha. So it just takes your training to a whole nother level Dude. and makes you a safer diver. Right? I don't think there's anything scarier than being underwater and you're running out of oxygen. You're, you're, oh, that that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine a more terrifying scenario for myself. I, I've never done it. Yeah. Um, I've, I bought a snorkel like a couple years ago mm-hmm. and I used it a couple times, you know, in a pool. And I'm just like, this is weird. Like it, it, it goes against what my body wants sure. to do, yeah. you know, or it's like, this does not feel right. Right. And, uh, um, scuba diving, skydiving, all things like I really hold high up here on my bucket list where I got to I got to do, uh-huh. um, um, re- but being able to rescue, I just saw a story, a headline. And some guy um, had fallen into the ocean off of his boat. Something was something had happened, and Leonardo DiCaprio, the actor, happened to be in the area and rescues the guy. So it's like, imagine you're out <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Rescue. You're like, I'm. I'm. I guess this is it. And next thing you know, Leonardo DiCaprio shows up and saves your life. Wow. <laughs> what crazy. But what? Oh, I, I read another story where a guy got rescued. I think two times from a scenario like that where he, he, he worked on a boat and it went down and mm-hmm. he ended up becoming a, a, a rescue diver right. because it's like, okay, man, I've been rescued twice. Like, like let's go. I guess this, I need to mm. pay it forward and or pay it back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what's a, what's maybe a really difficult situation that you had found yourself in while diving? Oh, uh, <clears throat> when I started diving, there were three things I was afraid of. Yeah. One was sharks. Yes, of course. If I never saw a shark, I would be the happiest diver ever. The other one was diving at night. Uh Now, you're asking me to jump into inky black water. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And then... uh, (laughs) (laughs) It's just there's anything and everything within... Because what's what's the, the range that you're light? could see the like, light. Yeah. It's all you. about the light, you know, cause you can't see any distance at all. Right? Yes. So wherever your light is shining is what you see. You can't see what's next to you. What's right. Cause you're not shining. A light uh, <laughs> dude. Uh, it, it, but it's better than, than you think. Cause there's all kinds of critters that only come out at night. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. you know, you're typically not diving very deep. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're just looking for the, the animals that, don't come out during the day. Yeah. But, and then the third one was diving in kelp. I was oh, always yeah. terrified of entanglement, yes. you know, just getting wrapped up. But, um, I ended up loving all three. Ooh. Yeah. So it, it's a way to push past your fears. Yeah. Yeah. And, con- and, and conquer that. There's, there's, yeah. And the, and the more you do it, so you get in the water the first time when it's dark oh, yeah. and you're like, yeah. this is terrifying. You get out and you're like, Hey, that was all right. That and the next okay. time it's, it's less and less, right. um, that the fear is present because not that the fear goes away. It's just, you become more comfortable Absolutely. with that feeling mm-hmm. and you become confident right. in, in your training and all yeah. that. What was it? Uh, <laughs> what was the thought when you saw your first shark then? 
It was intentional, actually. Okay. Uh, it was my first international dive trip. We mm -hmm. went to Fiji. Okay. So right away, I've set the bar super high. Yeah. I, I mean, the diving there is phenomenal. And um, we, we were diving all kinds of different stuff. And then about the fourth day, they had a, a sign-up sheet. Mm-hmm. Would you like to do a shark dive? Ooh, okay. And I'm like, no. No, right. <laughs> yeah. But all my friends were. And I knew if I didn't do this, gotcha. I'm going to be coming back, hearing all their stories oh, of how cool this was. The FOMO, fear yes. of missing out. So your so, mom saying, Cecil, <laughs> if your friends jumped off a cliff, would yes, you I do would. Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm that guy. So, so yeah, I, I signed up and... Um, Unfortunately, I had enough time between signing up to diving to look them up, to do some research. Of what sharks to expect? Yeah, because yeah, they knew what sharks were going to be there. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I looked it up and I said, you know, I'm thinking at least it's not great white sharks. Mm -hmm. No, they were worse. There are worse sharks. Bull sharks? Bull sharks. Yeah. Yes, more human attacks by bull sharks than I think white. they're responsible for the Jaws movie series, the story. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, they're one of the few sharks that can also swim up fresh, fresh water. water. Yes, I think that's yeah, why. Yeah. That's why. And, and their visibility drops. They, they get that sensation of electrical patterns and stuff, and they'll do a test what? bite. Oh, my God. Dude, I'm getting chills. Yeah, Just... yeah. A test bite can do some serious damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, oh, like, I don't like the taste. It's not like a licking a Tootsie Pop. No, it's right. like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, Whoa man. And and sharks don't need a lot of water. Eat, like a, you know, two Surprising. and a half feet, three feet. Right. You right. know, that's all you need, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So, so you prepared yourself for a bull shark? I... I sort of prepared myself as good as I could, yeah. but I'd already been diving um, and taking a camera down with me that could shoot photos and video. Okay. So it, had, it was a pretty good size rig um, because I'd been doing photography for so many years before that. Yeah. It was a natural thing. If I'm going underwater, I want to capture it, mm -hmm. right? I want to share it with yeah. other people. Yeah. So uh, they briefed us on the boat that if you have a pretty good size camera rig, don't be surprised if one of the uh, dive master leads that are residents of Fiji, if they don't swim over to you and go, you know, come on. And if you want to, you can leave your safe row of people, Little haven. follow them out, and you're the closest object to the, to the sharks other than the guy feeding them. Yeah. Who's in chain mail. <laughs> dude what a job yeah yeah so there were three of us that got invited out all three of us went out and uh i was a little bit nervous and and your head's on a swivel because yeah. they're everywhere and coming from all different directions um but then it just faded it just you're concentrating on how beautiful these animals are they're moving yeah just swimming by you um, and then I just started thinking photography, videography, and I'm framing the shots. And, mm -hmm. and when they tap the tanks to say it's time to turn around and head back, that's when I knew I'd overcome it because yeah. I never looked back to see if a shark was following me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. What a feeling, man. What a feeling. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just taking that all that in, man. That's that's a that's a lot to yeah. to to unpack there. That's, yeah. a, that's epic, man. It was way before I got into this, or these flags would have been flying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know if you know, if you, I don't know if you see any red flags, so you might <laughs> you might be colorblind. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I do like to try new things. Yeah, um, and most of them have an element of risk. Mm -hmm. You know, risk yeah. reward. Well, it makes you feel alive afterwards yeah. too, yeah. you know. It's like there's no greater feeling than that right. where you 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 test it. Like that's just you you have to be okay with being uncomfortable for a moment and allowing yourself to just gain some confidence in those moments. Right. You'll be way better off for right. it. You can tell, I mean, that makes sense why you're you're, you're really calm, level-headed. You got a warm smile. <laughs> you smile with your eyes, you know, it's some of us don't. We're just like <laughs> 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 um so with, with, with scuba diving, you, did you already kind of have the intention that you were also going to photograph a lot of those, you know, moments? 
Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of warned. Um, when I first started, I, I was probably only an advanced diver, but still only maybe three or four months into diving. And I was diving as much as I could. Oh, wow. Wait, and wait, where are you living at this time? Here. <laughs> yeah. Where do you dive here in the desert? <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a there's a couple of places, right? There's yeah. one on Broadway. Well, it, um, it's not even in pools here. You you do the pools for training. Stuff, gotcha. But you use the lakes, oh, and especially gotcha. like Lake Pleasant. We would go out there and dive. Um, winter diving is cold, but way better visibility because the algae stop blooming. Gotcha. So um, we would uh, go there quite a bit. Went up to Mojave Lake up by Kingman. Okay. And uh, at that time, they had a problem with a certain kind of mollusk that was eating all the algae. Oh, okay. And that meant the fish population dropped. But it meant it's very clear diving. So <laughs> for the diver side, it, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Because there's a place called Cabin Site, um, a little cove, and they purposely sunk a school bus and a van and a few other things to play with a couple boats um, it's a great place to dive because it's just so fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I um, did all that and then started doing things like Channel Island, going driving over to California and diving. Um, that's where the kelp forests were. And yeah, you know, beautiful stuff to look at, but really cold water. Cold, cold. Yeah. yeah. Um, how, how far north of LA, I guess, is that? Right off, like Long Beach. Okay. You know? Um, Anna Kappa, uh, Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. fun diving. Yeah. Um, so lo lots of lakes out here in Arizona to, yeah. to do diving in, yeah. right? What's, um, what's the deepest that you've gone in Arizona, I guess? Oh, Arizona, <laughs> you, you can go deep. Yeah. Um, we are limited to 130 feet as a recreational diver. Gotcha. Okay. That's what we're trained for, our equipment. Yeah. All of our calculation tables. Any um, lower than that, what happens? You run risks that I'm not willing to, to push the boundary on. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But <clears throat> you can dive a uh, deep, much deeper. Yeah. But you need that training and you need different equipment. And mm -hmm. usually those are called technical divers. Mm -hmm. And I've got good friends that are just hooked with this. They're consumed. Yeah. They jetted right past normal diving yeah, yeah. and uh, truly went into the deep end. And even at <laughs> Lake Pleasant, they'll dive the old Waddell Dam. So the old dam is still there. It's okay. just underwater. Oh, wow. Okay. And that's deeper than I can go. Uh -huh. But these guys do it all the time with rebreathers or um, different air mixes, you know, mm -hmm. exotic blends yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah. So a whole different genre of people. Yeah, seriously. Do you know any uh, free divers? I don't. I've yeah. watched a few documentaries. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Yeah. Never going to try this. No, I mean, that's, again, that's one thing where it's like, dude, yeah. 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 <laughs> Come on. It's a yeah. whole nother world, man. And right. then the, the threat of if you, uh, if you come up too early or too soon, too quickly. Free diving doesn't have that because you're only using the air that was in your lungs when you started. So mm -hmm. it's never going to expand beyond what you started out with. The danger is when you're scuba diving and you have that compressed air tank. Oh, gotcha. When you dive down, everything compresses. Um, and if you were to take a breath of compressed air and then held that breath and, and started ascending, oh. you can blow your lungs out. Oh, shoot. Yeah, kind of bad. You know, you can get a embolism in your lungs. There's a lot of things. So... We dive with dive computers or dive tables and stuff. Most people use computers now. Uh -huh. And it warns you, you're going too fast. Um, it tracks your entire dive. Oh, wow. So, so you can analyze it later. Yeah, there's some fail-safes there yeah, in yeah. place. Yeah, and you're always diving with a buddy. So That's you were you talking about running out of air. They need to be close enough for you to swim over to and go. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, and then let's go. Yes, yeah. Let's and then you share. You, because we have a second octopus, oh, okay. that they call it, uh, another regulator, and you just hand it to them. He's, both of you are breathing off of yours now, so gotcha. the dive's over. 
got yeah yeah it's just to get up and yeah. out how long yeah. is that cable cord get that cord yeah um we would be too far away oh gotcha. so usually yeah. you would be close enough to grab the person uh-huh. like by their their strap um and then you can do a controlled ascent and so how do you do that underwater you'd have to blow everything out first and then shh, no no out. it's you just put this thing in your mouth and you breathe so it's like I figure you open your mouth under there. There's water going to come in, right? Yeah, no, your lips are sealed around it, and um, it's got a valve mm-hmm, on it. Mm-hmm. So as you breathe in, the air comes from the tank, and then when you breathe out, that valve shuts. The air is not coming from the tank. It, it escapes out the front of or yeah. the sides of the regulator. I gotcha. What's the most exotic animal you you've seen while diving? Um. I love octopus. Yeah. I, oh. I love to see them. Yes. That's my favorite thing. But probably the most exotic was uh, a mola mola. What's that? It, it's called a, a sunfish. Oh, yes. But they're really huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really huge. Aren't they like super ugly as well? Super ugly. <laughs> <laughs> we were diving in California and we were on an ascent and I was below the person I was diving with, my dive buddy. Mm-hmm. He never saw it. Oh. So as, as I'm, as we're coming up, I happened to look down and it was kind of coming up behind us, oh, okay. you know, just doing its thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was so cool to see. That's the first one I ever saw. They think, don't they think the, the sunfish might've been responsible for the Loch Ness monster, um, legend? Yeah, we'll go with okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, never seen any like squid. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. And Bonaire. Um, we, we saw some, some, I saw some, uh, squid and cuttlefish kind of stuff. And, um, I, I love Bonaire and mm-hmm. that's one of my favorite dive places. And wh- where's that? It's off the coast of Venezuela. So okay. there's three islands. The other ones are probably more famous. Aruba. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Curacao and mm-hmm. uh, Bonaire, ABC islands. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Man. So cool, man. Biking, you operate drones. Like what's, 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 uh, uh, do you have like a whole business angle with your, your nope. the drone applications? No. That's just for personal recreation. Personal and, and I love to volunteer and mm. do stuff, right. You know, help groups out like new breed yeah. and stuff. So, um, yeah, no, I, I was a, um, motorsports racetrack photographer for oh. a few years gotcha. and kind of, hone my skills with motion uh, um, there okay. and uh, kind of after that you know I had a day job and mm-hmm. most of the people either that were racing cars or motorcycles or whatever um, didn't really realize I had a day job right yes. when can I have my photos you know and uh-huh. uh, so over time I, I stopped shooting it um, and switch more to event photography and, and just donating it, you know? Gotcha. Uh, what I don't shoot is weddings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different skill set. As far as like dealing with the people. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. The mother. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How many, how many did it take before you were like, okay, check please. No, you know, I, I never did. Oh, okay. Um, except for relatives. So oh, gotcha. I did shoot some family weddings and stuff like that. But yeah. it's like, if I shoot this, this is my gift to you. Yes. I'm not, you know, I'll do post-processing type stuff, but um, it's yours. Yeah. I'm giving you this disc with all the images. Yeah. On, you know. Yeah. The, the night captured, you know. Yeah. 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 What, um, so what's the differences that you had to really hone in the skills and the eye, I guess, when you're dealing with. Uh, a moment in motion that you're trying mm-hmm. to capture. Well, you just hit it. You know, what are you trying to capture? Mm-hmm. Um, like a, a race car or a motorcycle on a racetrack. And as it's coming around a corner, you're trying to get that lean if it's a biker. Mm-hmm. Um, but the worst thing that you can do is, is it's, you kind of see a three quarter angle shot of it. Yeah. The wheels are standing still. You shot with such a high shutter speed that it's brilliantly crisp. Yeah. You have no sense of motion. Gotcha. They could be parked in a, they could be standing out there. At that right? point. Yeah. 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 
So um, I guess w one of the things I concentrated on was using really slow shutter speeds ah. and still having the the object crisp yeah and the wheels blurred and the wow. background blurred yeah 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 without doing that in post processing cuz you can do that after but you yes. usually tell oh yeah 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 what's what's the dead giveaway uh, you know, anything that uh, looks photoshopped, it's it's usually the pixels on the edge. The edges, right, yeah. Don't match, mm -hmm. you know, or it's abruptly different. Dang, man. How long did it take you to try and nail like that? Like where, you know, the image, the main thing is crisp, but the tires are there. Like, do you recall how long that kind of took? And were you finally like, yes, I got yeah, it. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm trying. No, well, you know, I didn't do it intentionally. Yeah. Um, it just kind of came out of shooting. Yes. And then I, I found that combination and I went, that oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. What was I doing? And you go back and look at, um, the stats on the photo. Oh. oh. And yeah. then I started intentionally doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. See, I just, I had my first like actual photo shoot <laughs> this last, well, this last Monday, um, for some headshots and, and whatnot. And he's a, a dance photographer. Mm. So he was talking about, you know, like that's one of his main passions mm -hmm. is, is, is capturing right, dancers. Right. And I was like, Oh yeah. Cause he was mentioning shutter speeds mm -hmm. uh, or, um, you know, the, where you take like, um, a, a blast, a burst. Right? Sure, sure. And I'm like, Oh, is that what you do for the dancer? He's like, Oh no. He's all, that's one intentional shot. Right, I right. wait for the right moment and click mm -hmm. it. And I was like, oh, I yeah. guess that does make sense. Yeah. Um, and then he had mentioned that uh, dancers were very particular about their hands. Mm. And that's when you'll reshoot most of the shots is, is oh, I don't like my hand positioning, my right, placement, right. The, where it was. Mm -hmm. It was too flex, too hard. And um, my girlfriend, Sheila, which you mentioned, she danced a lot. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's all about hands. So she oh, brought wow. up examples where like, Look at how powerful the pose is, the body, the legs, but look at the hands mm -hmm. and look at the, the stoic, the, right. the face just says, I'm just, I'm yeah. here. I'm not struggling to do this powerful pose, but the, the hands are nice and soft yeah. and yeah. the face is just stoic. And I'm like, boom, new appreciation. Right, right. <laughs> Hard in motion. Yeah. Seriously. Capturing, capturing that at the right, at the right, right moment. Yeah. What, um, so you got into, was photography one of your main passions and interests before like motorcycles oh, yeah. and scuba diving? Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the first, uh, I guess, what smartphone set it all off for you? <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. What, what were you using? What was the first camera you ever had? <laughs> Way before smartphone. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. It was back in the 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I had a couple of SLRs that had interchangeable lenses. Um, and I took a class at Phoenix College, and yeah. you know that kind of really got me hooked too. Uh, and you know, it just kind of blossomed after that. Did you did you take it as far as like having the whole room, the red room? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, black and white, yeah. and it uh, was the dark room, and and doing the developing, and and you know now a lot of people will say, hey, you've altered the phone, the uh, photo after you took it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's cheating. <laughs> Well, yeah, ideally you capture exactly what you wanted in the camera. Yes. But uh, even in the days of the darkroom, you could alter the photo and, burn and dodge it, you yeah. know, so you're changing the light balance. Yeah. Um, make, make the dark sharper. Yeah, make, yeah. Yeah. And you can crop. Like you took this big a picture, but really that's all you want to focus yeah. on. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Just more, you know not automated, not, not right. digit digitally doing it. You don't it, just press like, a button. <laughs> oh, so much better. <laughs> Auto. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely, you know, making something efficient and easier mm -hmm. and more accessible is, is awesome. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a ton of upside to that. The older I get, the more I appreciate the intention and the process of the old style of things, you know, like, you know, got rid of, or we haven't used, you know, the, 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 uh, Nespresso machine or like a standard coffee pot. Like now I got the, the, the pour over drip, like letting yeah. that kind of go and just, just, Hey, I'm here. I'm making coffee. I'm pouring it over. Right, right. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm using that moment here to meditate or I use it a lot. Cause I'm, I'm learning French right now for 
no other reason than my daughter said she wanted to learn French. So I was like, I'm going to start it with you. And now she just kind of dropped it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm learning French for the next who knows how long. Right, right. <laughs> but I, I, I do like that. Like, so like the whole idea of having like the red room or the dark room, mm -hmm. right. And going through that process. But obviously that is super time consuming because yeah. you have to have what, at least three baths. Usually. Yeah. 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 And so you have to, there's a ton of chemicals. That's the problem. Yes. You know, chemicals and getting room dark enough. Mm. And uh, yeah, but it's very cool. Yeah. You know, just to feel something develop. And, and it was a white piece of paper when you started. Gosh, so true, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a blank canvas. Blank canvas. That's about as close to art as I get, right? So <laughs> <laughs> photos. <laughs> Man, I, I do like to, yes, everybody has a camera, you know, in their pocket these days. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah, you can take a photo of anything and yeah. cool. You captured it, but mm -hmm. it does take skill and an eye and, you know, the perfect angle and contrast with, within the, uh, you know, the, the scene you're trying to capture. Like right. that's, there's, there's art in everything and it's cheesy to say, but it is, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's, it's everything, you know, on, on how you choose to, you know, you know, select a bike, how you choose to ride your right, bike right. and drive it and, right. all, and all of that, you know, how you put on your wetsuit. I don't, there's, sure. there's art everywhere. If you, if you want to appreciate, you yeah. know, life. Well, yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. There there's is. cultures even that uh, celebrate the simplicity of pouring some tea. Yes. You know, and it, Take it to a whole art form. Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. And I think that's what you have to do. You have to, you have to like really dive into, you know, what you have, what you have in front of you. Right. Instead of always like, I wish I had this right. because this would be so much easier. No. Hey, just fall in love with what you have and the processes that are at your fingertips and sure, you know, appreciate that. Really, really be present in that. And I'm speaking to myself. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, definitely strive for, you know, you know, to make it easier and, and, you know, where you can expedite something cause we all got to get to some, you know, the next thing, right. you know, you, you got to get, you got to get to, to your bike and come back. <laughs> what's, um, what's the first drive that you have in mind for that bike? Oh, I, I or do want to, yeah, ride. I, I want to take it, uh, to Oregon and okay. visit some guys that I worked with in the, the last team I was in before I left. Um, I was part of a cybersecurity response team when oh, things sure. go really you know wonky yeah um i love these guys but i never got to meet them face to face oh wow okay so uh, that's one of the things i want to do is just go how long have you guys not known each other uh it was probably <laughs> two three years something like that it's yeah. a long time yeah a great group uh one of my favorite teams that i've worked with mm -hmm. and and do they ride or some do okay some do so Some you'll will take make it. fun of me on my yeah. cold wing. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna say you went that route. You went yeah. to the dark side. Yeah. Um, so you'll you'll ride there. What's what's the the trip looking like? I mean, is, are you just beelining it straight there? Or are you S sort of? You know, I, I stop and see some things along the way, mm -hmm. um, but it'll probably be solo. Yeah. You know? I've got a friend that loves to ride, and we'll probably do some rides like, um, you know, we went to Yosemite. Okay. And yeah, yeah. gorgeous ride, especially <laughs> yes. on a motorcycle. Wow. Uh, we spent a few days like in Kernville, never even heard of this place. Mm -mm. An awesome little community. We hit some breweries yeah. and um, checked that out. And that was fascinating. So I do like to stop along the way and enjoy it. Yeah. I just. Phew. What are you planning for the, for the drive up there as far as like time wise, like a couple days? It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Like, what yeah. do you, you know, yeah. what do you, you just going along? That reminds me Kinda of wing it. Yeah. You know, my parents did that back in the day and I was like, I look at it now. I was like, how did you guys even just like yeah. do this? Because, you know, fuck, I can't do this shit these days. Yeah, um, yeah. We, uh, my, my, my mom was in this like big empowerment week long, like camp, um, in Reno. Mm -hmm. So we went, my dad just, we just hung out basically at casinos, you know, while my mom was there and, uh, we were in the arcades and mm. stuff. And then, um, my mom graduated and we were headed back, uh, down and they're like, Hey, why don't we, uh, go to Tahoe? We're like right here. So we went to Tahoe, went on a boat, 
little boat ride. That was cool. Beautiful. Uh, went down and they're like, hey, we're near Yosemite. Let's go check it out. Cool. Mm-hmm. Went through Yosemite, watched that, loved it, saw a bear. And then they're like, mm, we're probably not ever going to get this opportunity again. Let's, let's go see the Golden Gate Bridge. So we went all the way up to, wow. you know, uh, San Francisco and then went down, you know, the PCH and mm-hmm. then saw the ocean for the first time, went to La Jolla, saw nice. the seals. And I'm just like, dude, this, this week long thing turned into like almost three weeks. And I'm just like, <laughs> how did you guys manage? <laughs> you know, yeah. you guys are my age doing yeah, that yeah. now. I'm just like, whoa, but it's, it's I was grateful for that experience. Very, very Mm -hmm. fond because I love to look at maps and atlases and all that. So like, what an adventure for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that was what, 10, I think 10 or 11 or so. And uh, my sister chose not to go and she really missed out. Um, (laughs) Me, my brother, my mom, my dad. And and that was awesome. So like for you to just say, my intention is to get to Oregon, but we'll just see. Yeah. We'll see how long it it takes. Yeah. Where the road leads. Yeah, seriously. So I, you mentioned cybersecurity. So that is, was that the bulk of your uh, your career was doing cybersecurity stuff? No, um, probably the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, but uh, before that, it was all IT. Okay. You know, IT support, whether writing software or um, supporting software developers. Mm-hmm. So you, you can code and all that? Like, I used to. I you, gotcha. Nobody would want me to code now. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't that good then. <laughs> ah, I got you. Got you. Do you work more with like the systems on how they, how people maybe interface with them a yeah, little bit more? Yeah. Because yeah, you're, you're more the, the, the story of, right. of something like, okay, what do you, yeah. we need to be able to reach this client, this yeah. customer, this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're since retired and, and taking your story to another level. Eh? Yeah. You're doing that. Oh, that's uh hopefully my wife's still here okay or not (laughs) he's like i'm ringing too i think it rings like maybe three times and then it stops you got a you got an old school answer machine is it you and your wife going back and forth yeah Yeah. we actually have a land oh she saw yes we actually have a landline yeah idea and you guys go back and forth hey guys it's the walkers (laughs) you missed us we're out living a great story yes (laughs) <laughs> more for like just um you know, call filtering where you yes know, oh that's clearly spam so yeah exactly yeah 99 percent of our phone calls these mm-hmm. days right <laughs> um i guess what's what's on the what's on the on the horizon right now for you is like any new ventures like or anything i i, I need to know that you didn't mm-hmm. touch on I mean, well, motorcycles the, race photographers yeah. scuba diving no you know it's funny because you do know the answer to that uh, when i retired one of the things i i kind of said was um i want to keep my brain active mm-hmm. i, I want to learn new things yeah. right so i may have um come down and paid you a visit and Bought some electronic drum kit. Oh, from that's you. right. So I don't do music. You know, I'm, uh-huh. I can barely play a radio. Yeah. And so uh, this this is a new journey, and it's definitely it's fun. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It definitely I got a long fun. ways to go, but you know, just learning new stuff and yeah. and new patterns and um, starting to read the music. Uh, okay. It's helping the old noodle. Yeah, you have to do that. You do have like that's what that's when people deteriorate yeah, is where you yeah. don't you're not learning anything new. You're not challenging yourself. Right. You're not solving puzzles like we are. This brain is equipped to find problems where they don't exist. They'll make up problems if right. there's nothing there. Like that's just oh, what yeah. we do, right? So you got this new tool in front of you. How's how's it been working out? I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a great kid. Why um, drums? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I dabbled with guitar and uh-huh. and uh, keyboards yeah. and stuff some time ago. It just never really clicked. Gotcha. And then at church, I was part of a production team for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And my job was roam camera. So I had a camera that was portable, tethered. Um, and the bulk of what I was shooting was the drummer during worship. Gotcha. And, and you not knowing that that's what you were doing, but then you you realize, okay, I'm really focused on the drummer. Yeah, yeah. And and just it, it blew me away. How can they be doing all of that at the same time? Four yeah. limbs moving in different directions. Yep. Um, 
And I just knew there's no way in the world I could ever do that. You know what? I think too, your love for capturing a, a moment in motion, Mm -hmm. who's the most Mm -hmm. person that's moving on the stage. Right. You know, it's it's the drummer because they yeah. have to yeah. do this versus everybody else can kind yeah. of be here. Yeah, they move around a little bit, right. but, you know, to play the song, they have to be moving. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And we had a great director that's, he's sitting in the back. He can see all four or five cameras and um, just had a great eye. Mm-hmm. He would say, okay, try this. And just you moving and them moving and getting it just right where it, it kind of, breaks where you see the drumsticks hitting it and then you can see the guitarist the lead guitar in the background yeah and then you you either like start with them and pull back Mm -hmm. and expose the drums Mm -hmm. or the other way around or just some motion yeah uh great eyes taught he taught me a lot nice the kind of how to capture it yeah shout out to your director yeah and it's primal too eric did you say Herrick with an H? No, Eric. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shout out Eric, man. We uh, we appreciate people that teach us. Yes. You know, new perspectives in that sense. Um, but yeah, drums. Drums was my first instrument. Okay. Very very primal. I mean, I, is that every culture's first instrument is Probably. something to hit? Right. It yes. has to be right. Yeah, my first instrument until I found out how expensive it was <laughs> to to get everything rehead and replacement oh. cymbals and all that. Yeah, I was in high school. I was like, right, yeah, right. no. I guess I'm picking up the bass I've mm-hmm. had back behind yeah, my yeah. drum set for two years. Yeah, yeah that's where it started for Probably sure. Pre-electronic. <laughs> um, they were out for sure, but, but yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Unless you were going to spend like five thousand dollars, which right. again, you can't. You can't. Yeah. No, they had some. They had some good stuff in the eighties. You know, because everything was electronic at that mm. point, you know, 909. True. Yeah. yeah. So what are your, um, what are some, do you have any drummers that you kind of look up to or the, you might not know the drummers, but maybe the bands that they're in? Um, well, there's always the classics, mm-hmm. you know, John Bonham and yeah, Neil Peart. And, yeah. Uh, those guys are just fascinating to watch, but then I'll go to some local shows Yeah. and who am I looking at? You know, I'm looking at the drummer and stuff. Yes. And we, a friend of mine and I just came back from um, Flagstaff. Mm-hmm. So we drove up there just to see the White Buffalo. Oh, shit. For the second year. Yeah. So uh, band most people don't know. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever seen Sons of Anarchy, the motorcycle show, yeah. right? Yeah. A lot of their music is in it. And that's where I first heard them. Very unique voice, three piece band. Yeah. Again, another. Why is it three piece bands are the ones you remember? You know, because right. like ZZ Top and and Rush and so forth. Yeah. Um, these guys had a. He has a very small drum kit. Yes. And the the guitarist, he's playing keyboards. He he'll play bass. He'll play guitar, and then the lead singer, and he can play guitar. And so, uh, just love their music, and and the drummer is known as the Machine. Okay, uh, and he is phenomenal. Yeah, he is a madman, kind, of, just a controlled madman. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of body movement. Yeah, but man, is he attacking the drums? And, yeah, and so much sound out of a really small kit. Yeah, yeah, and he's got that finesse. Yeah, oh, yeah, so good. Yeah. No, guys that can make, you know, a small drum kit, you know, just fill up so much space and mm-hmm. have, you know, a lot of dynamic to mm-hmm. it. You know, that's that's real skill there, man. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can get a drum kit with, you know, a, a nine piece drum set right. and you got 12 cymbals, yeah. you got all these things going for you, which is great. Yeah. But someone that can you can strip it down, but still make it sound full. Exactly. Yeah. More appreciation yeah. for that, yeah. too. Yeah. So we drive up every year. So when's when's the band starting? <laughs> I'll find a geriatric band. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you'll come up with a badass name too yeah. for it, man. Yeah. Well, uh, best of luck in that endeavor. Thank and you. The drums. Just keep it fun. Be, yeah, keep, absolutely. In this day and age of like you know Instagram and and social media, where you see everybody just absolutely killing it, and you know 
making crazy money and having mm-hmm. all these followers from it. People forget that they can do something just right. because it's right. fun. Yeah. Just because I like this to occupy my time. You know, you don't have to, you know, you know, obviously, obviously I was like, when's the band? You know, when are you doing this? When he's, I'm, I'm just not, man. I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm doing this for fun. Right, right. And, and I, I get a lot of joy, peace, and exactly rejuvenation right, out of it, right. man. Yeah, we need yeah. that. We satisfaction. Need those yes, satisfaction, challenging yourself. Yeah. Oh, so, so much upside. Right, right. So much upside. And um, any parting words you want to give to these fine folks of unlimited wisdom up in that cranium here? <laughs> Just uh, keeping it nice and tight. Kind of just staying with this theme, you know. Yeah. Like you said, get out there. Um, live a great story. Yeah. You know, and uh, inspire others. Um, you know, it's it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't. No. Yeah. It really doesn't. That's beautiful, man. Well, we'll wrap this up so you can get up to uh, Nevada and get your bike. Six-hour drive. <laughs> Six-hour drive. <laughs> You're not riding it back, right? You've got no. the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that just going to be like, you're just staring at it in the rearview mirror like, oh, I wish I was riding that. Oh, I wish yeah. I was riding that. And it's an enclosed trailer, so yeah. I can't even see it. So, Oh, man. But hold on. Are you going to test drive it up there? You yeah, have to, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they have a test track. Okay. You're going to so, take yeah. that turn oh, at 100? Oh, well. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's fast. Yeah? Yeah. Dang. What if you, what if you come across you know, a, an area on the way back and you're like, I got to get down and ride this a little bit right now. <laughs> just unload it. Yeah. Just unload it. Look real at quick. those curves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My man loves his curves. If you learn one thing tonight, Cecil loves his curves. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I appreciate you coming on, sharing that. Thank you. Um, I knew you were an interesting individual and, uh, um, I hope to see you next week, uh, next weekend, you know, at least just yeah, the cool. day and, and, uh, you know, just see you do your thing up there for the group as well. Very cool. Thank you. So, all right, man. Well, guys, um, what's your uh, social media handle so people know where to follow you? On Maybe. Instagram, it's Scoobrew, S C U B R O O, and that's what my car's name is. Oh yeah, heck yeah! Combination of scuba and Subarus are called Ruse. Ah, Scoobrew. okay. So. Subarus are great cars, man. Yeah. Love it them. goes anywhere. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Scoobrew. Uh Cecil, again, thank you, man. Uh, uh, nothing but love for you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on, guys. Uh, until next time, live a great story.